Uh, my name is Paul Taylor. I'm the regional director who works with colleges, universities, and high schools now in six states, including Tennessee. So I am in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, where my wife works for the University of Kentucky. And uh, I was a regional, I was a, a um, vice president of enrollment management, so I worked on a college campus for more than 30 years before joining the Clearinghouse. It's a pleasure today, this is my first opportunity, Colin Hutchinson, who is in our Herndon, Virginia office, and is on this uh, WebEx as well. He's done the, uh, the all of the, the previous WebExes to talk about the Tennessee Electronic Transcript Exchange, how it works, but we're delighted to have so many people that have joined us today. So, Lisa, we're going to pose a question here. And just for our purposes and just for fun, we'd like to know, where are you located in Tennessee? So Lisa has put these questions up, and you can let us know, and we should see people popping up here in a few minutes. We know we have people in Chattanooga, but where else around the state are we going to find people? So it looks like Sullivan County, uh, Herndon, which is obviously our home office, Sparta, uh, Morristown, Nashville. Uh, wow, Nashville's getting ready for the SEC tournament coming up, and it's not like there's not something going on in Nashville every 30 seconds. Uh, Sullivan County, uh, Fayetteville, Lincoln County. So obviously we have people located across the state, and I guess people are still going, uh, still going to be, be churning in with information here. So we're glad you're here. It's a pleasure for us to be able to, to do this. Um, and as we begin to think about the agenda and talk about the agenda, I'd like to uh, ask another question. How many of you, and Lisa will put this up, you can just check the marks uh, on, the, on the screen, how many of you are familiar with the Tennessee Transcript Center and what this uh, solution that the uh, National Student Clearinghouse, the Tennessee Higher Education Commission have come together to uh, let counselors and high school people in Tennessee improve their, uh, improve really the way you're able to do business and some time saving. So wow, uh, the, the results are, are flowing in. I feel like I should be on uh, the night of the election. <laughs> so we have 77.7% uh, uh, do not know. 22% of you all do know. So we won't turn this into a Democratic-Republican <laughs> question. And we're only going to have one more question as we go through the whole thing. So I appreciate your, uh, your engaging here with us. And it looks like 70% 70, 70 no and 30% don't. So that's, that's good. Let's just know where we are. And as we think about the agenda, uh, I'd like to be able to say, gosh, just chime in with questions. But if you've ever done a WebEx where uh, multiple people have access to the uh, voice, it can <laughs> turn ugly really quick. So we're going to ask you to pose those questions in the chat, and we'll try to get to those toward the end. So our agenda today, we want to talk a little bit about what's the reality of a high school counselor. Now, my mom was a high school counselor. It was a whole lot different back then, but I promised you, uh, promise you that she sent a ton of transcripts across the country for my graduating class and many graduating classes that preceded me and followed me. So we want to think about, you know, how is it that your day works? Uh, talk a little bit about the solution, and the solution is a product that the Tennessee Higher Education Commission came to the Clearinghouse to, um, to work with them to establish a solution. We'll talk about additional benefits, how it works, the application preview, and resources. So here we go. So does this sound like you, your office? I need my transcript sent to these schools. Uh, this is always one of my favorites. Have you sent my transcript yet? The other question is, have they been received yet? Uh, where's my scholarship money? How much scholarship money am I going to get? What do I have to do to, uh, to claim that scholarship money? So maybe you wish you had a more efficient and cost-effective way to exchange transcripts and data uh, in the state of Tennessee. 
So a closer look at Mount Juliet High School, and we talked with a counselor there, and, and she provided us some additional information. This is just the way she does it. I'm sure you have your own system, but she has a system where she has a sheet on the desk out front, and students can come in and place their requests for transcripts to be sent to colleges here, place it on the sheet, date required, first, second, third college, and then the notation for her on the right-hand side as to when these are sent. So this is a paper process. You may have something far better. You may have something might be not quite as good, but this is the way she does it. So her manual transcript request processing by the numbers, she feels that she says 200 minutes per request form. So one of those sheets takes about 200 minutes, nearly half a work day. Uh, at Mount Juliet, she has 500 seniors, 94% are college-bound, and that resulted in 1,400 transcripts being sent last year. Let's see if we can make this move forward here. Yeah. Uh, the material costs alone to send 1,400 transcripts, and you're looking at 5,000 pieces of paper, 1,400 envelopes, uh, ink, of $700 in postage, so the cost of sending transcripts is not just in the uh, person power that you're dedicating in your office, but it's also real money. So as you look at the benefits to Mount Juliet for using this solution, uh, she's changed her processes. So the left-hand side is the way it was before. The right-hand side is using the Tennessee Transcript Exchange Network. So she's moved her time from 200 minutes per request form down to 10 minutes. She uses zero pieces of paper, zero envelopes, zero ink, and no dollars in postage. So I think if you just, if you're in your office today, look around, think of the way you do that, blink your eyes for a second and say, wow, could I get rid of this? Could I improve this? Uh, would this make my life better? And maybe not your life, but somebody who's sitting out front uh, who's, who's fulfilling these requests. So the solution will provide fewer interruptions, more time. Our students will be able to order transcripts 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to be processing them, but it's an online transcript ordering solution. A central location for receiving and processing transcript requests, and obviously reduced material use, cost savings, et cetera. Uh, Colin and Lisa, I'm going to ask if you all uh, feel free to jump in at any point in time that you have any, any you know, recommendation or anything that we might want to expound on here or expand either one. So additional benefits, there's an automatic uh, lottery scholarship GPA transmission that goes to eGrants. Uh, the Clearinghouse is not, your, is not some, maybe your normal partner. We're a nonprofit. Uh, we've been around for 25 years. We work with um, 3,700 colleges and universities, and the number of high schools is in the, in, the, in the big thousands. So we're delighted to be able to provide a service. We're not, this whole thing is free. It doesn't cost anybody anything. There's no subscription fee for you, no annual maintenance, no ordering fees for students, uh, nothing. And I see that we have Suzette Telly on, the, on this call as well. She is with the Tennessee Higher Education Commission, and that is the organization that came to the Clearinghouse looking for a solution across Tennessee. Uh, you all may know, or you may not know, that across Tennessee, you're making some real strides nationally in terms of your, uh, your higher education goals, uh, the the desire to provide more Tennesseans with the opportunity to get college, whether it be four-year, two-year, technical, uh, technical uh, diplomas, degrees, certificates. So you're making a name for yourself when you hit the USA Today and you hit the Wall Street Journal with what's going on in Tennessee. And you know all of this idea that we're, we're talking about today, this concept is to improve attendance for students in Tennessee uh, to move forward into a higher education uh, opportunity. So Suzette, if you've got anything you want to add here, you just uh, uh, text or, or send a note to Lisa and we'll open your, open your phone up and let you, uh, let you speak here. 
Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how it works. So this is going to be my last question of the day. We're going to put up another. We're going to put up another survey, and this survey is asking you what kind of student information system do you currently have? Are you currently operational with? So we have some choices up here, and I was amused when I, <laughs> Lisa Black put this together from our office, and I was amused when it said, "What's an SIS?" But that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we have at least one answer with uh, what's an SIS at this point. So what we mean by SIS is what's your student information system? What do you run your records from? What do you run your class scheduling from? The usual suspects are here, but sometimes you run uh, you run a system, you, you don't have an SIS. You register your students, you produce transcripts, kind of in a homegrown solution. So. Yeah, let's see, we got two, four, five, ten, eleven, we got twelve answers so far. Um, so it looks like PowerSchool is the is the most it is used the most. We have some some of the each of the others as well. So an SIS is simply the student information system that, that will help you generate transcripts. On a college campus, it runs your registration process and grades and all those sorts of things. So the way it works, to go back to our <clears throat> slide, is that the high school uploads to us through that student information system. The file is going to be uploaded through a secure FTP account. So a secure FTP account is a file, uh, file protocol here that encrypts this information. So as you're sending this from Nashville to the to our offices in Herndon, Virginia, uh, it'll be encrypted. So if anybody ever tried to access that file, it would be it would be nothing to them. So it's a secure FTP FTP account, which we then load into what we call the Tennessee Transcript Center. From the Tennessee Transcript Center, your students can order uh, your high school alums can order a transcript. That information will be sent automatically to the Tennessee Higher Education Commission. Uh, the data will automatically upload to eGrams. Your high school staff can move transcripts. So you can move transcripts through us out to colleges and universities. So if you've got <clears throat> a transcript that a student orders today to go to, um, now I'm going to, I'll just pick a college, Chattanooga, uh, Chattanooga State then that transcript can be uploaded and sent uh, through us, through the electronic exchange system to Chattanooga State. So it's a busy slide, but it kind of gives you a conceptual idea of how the solution works. When we talk about the application preview, I, I want to talk more about, so here's the, here's the body a username, password, but how do you, how you get here is really what's going to be important to you. So I can show you what it looks like here. So here's your username, your password, your login. Then this screen, which is very busy, is going to give you an opportunity. This is kind of what you'll be able to see uh, in terms of on your once you're in the site. So items requiring attention, and this is very difficult to read, but it could be incoming transcripts, it could be transcript orders, it could be various pieces of information. Uh, I'm used to being able to click this in a different place. So <clears throat> here's an opportunity to send student documents. You can send one transcript. You can send various pieces of information. This will give you the, um, you can manage your student documents here from the site. It will give you the opportunity to see your top 10 student document uh, destinations. So where are my transcripts going? To what schools? So it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a solution here that once you sign up and, are, and work with our implementation team to get this done, what we've heard from counselors is it's a lifesaver, it's a lifeline, and it's a very, very attractive product. Uh, getting you there is what is what you know makes the difference. So, Colin, anything that you want to add here to this slide? Given that you're the Colin is the uh, Hutchison is the product manager for the Tennessee Transcript Services area. Colin, anything you want to add here? did a quite thorough job there, Paul. Thanks for um, letting me chime in, too. Uh, basically, 
one of the other things that tends to be a question down the road, and we don't, of course, need to show you everything and all the ins and outs of the application today, and we'll bring you up to speed once you do, in fact, go live. But as Paul mentioned, the piece that he's highlighted on right now, which is that dashboard. It's a 30-day rolling dashboard just showing you over the last 30 days where your transcripts have gone um, and the top 10 institutions. But notice that in the bottom right where there's the reporting header, you can actually run other reports with, on different timelines and uh, given different factors. So that's not the only type of reporting that you have at your disposal is that dashboard. You can always go back and run over an entire academic year, any sort of custom date range, um, and so forth. But ultimately, um, you know, what Paul touched on are the big items for you to understand when you engage with the product and finally do go live. The only other thing that I'll add is uh, just looking back, uh, as Paul touched on briefly when we were looking at the additional benefits, was, again, that we are integrated with Tennessee Higher Education Commission and Tennessee Student Assistance Corporation and the uh, e-grants process. So um, just know that that's something very unique uh, given the relationship that we have with Tennessee Higher Education Commission in that this isn't just transcript exchange between you and uh, colleges and universities or you and even high schools as students transfer, transfer within the state. But um, we also try to lighten your load further by removing that manual um, effort you need to take at the end of the year to report those final GPAs to eGrants. Um, because we know that you're trying to wrap everything up, graduate the students, and uh, enjoy your summer as well. So um, we're integrated with THEC to uh, help alleviate that burden too. So Colin, while you're on the phone, yeah, a couple of questions. One from uh, Jill Rochelle, and Jill, I might have pronounced that incorrectly. Uh, what has to be included on the transcript? Does the transcript have to be signed or can it be electronically submitted? And can you indicate additional uploads if all ACT scores are not listed or the current class schedule? Yes, these are all very good questions. Thank you, Jill, for putting them out there for the group's sake. Um, so. As I mentioned in my comment, the, we've worked with the student information systems in Tennessee serving all the public high schools. Um, so those, again, are Power School, Skyward, Follett, Edgepoint, uh, Chalkable, and also Infinite Campus. So within your student information system, there's a way to run an extract. Um, and I know in some of the systems, everything that's an extract is termed a report. So uh, that might be the language you're most familiar with. But you'll be able to run a report or an extract from your SIS that is compliant with our system. Uh, it's built by your SIS based on our needs um, so that you'll give us all of the necessary student identifying information, course grade data, um, the formats that they're providing to us even have the capabilities of including standardized test score information like ACT scores and, and even immunization data if you also store that in your student information system and want that as a part of a student's transcript. Um, I think to unpack your questions further, Jill, and add some further insight, uh, I know that some schools have made us aware over time that ACT scores uh, you might keep in a separate, separate system or you might not necessarily uh, load them into your student information system. So certainly if there are those other accessory pieces of information that are important to send with the student's transcript, there is the ability within the application to append additional attachments to the student's record. And then when you go and send that student's transcript to another institution, um, those attachments will go along with the transcript and all of that will be provided together to the institution. Um, and the nice thing is that as you um, update the student's record in our system, we will only replace the transcript data with the latest data you provided. So any attachments that you've loaded previously will be retained and uh, then be attached to the latest transcript record for that student. So you don't need to time and time again re-upload attachments of documents you want to send um, for that student each time you need to send their transcript. The That's a great other question. I'm sorry. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Like I said, there's, there's kind of a lot of questions there from Jill. So yeah. um, uh, let me just make sure I covered all those bases. 
Yeah, while you're looking, I was going to tell her she must have been an English major <laughs> <laughs> to be able to compose that sentence. <laughs> and then uh, the last piece I didn't touch on yet, just to round everything out with Jill's question, is uh, does the transcript have to be signed? So actually one of the things that, that may not have been very apparent with uh, when we were talking through the flow of how everything works is that the extract that we've worked with your student information systems to provide to us is actually a data file rather than the PDF transcripts that you typically know and look at and might print and send today. And the reason for that is that, one, um, by getting a data file, we're able to provide the necessary data to eGrants on your behalf when the time comes to do that at the end of the year, when we have final uh, GPAs for the students. But also um, a key component is that we worked with a body of uh, both post-secondary institution uh, users in Tennessee and secondary users, counselors, and so forth in Tennessee early on in the project and engagement um, to provide this service to define a standard high school transcript uh, view and layout for all of the high schools in Tennessee. And um, with that, what we'll do is when we get your data, we will represent that data on a standardized PDF so that the data is laid out in a standard format um, and in the same place regardless of which high school, uh, although your high school will be clearly identified in the header section of the transcript. And um, what's really beneficial is more on the receiving end. Uh, it really creates greater efficiency for the admissions offices because now rather than looking at 720 different high school transcript layouts across the state of Tennessee, they know where to look to get the exact information that they need regardless of the high school in the state of Tennessee and it's really creating great efficiencies for them and they're really pleased with uh, high schools coming on board to uh, use this product because of those efficiencies gained. Thanks, Colin. Uh, I'm going to answer David's question, and uh, he asked, can Tennessee students send transcripts to non-Tennessee colleges through this? And the answer to that is yes. And then um, Ann's question in terms of, can you send past transcripts or just current seniors? So we can. We will support you in using this system to the extent that you want to use it is really the best way for me to answer that question. Um, what you'll find when we go through the implementation process, just to focus our efforts and not uh, bury you uh, or us in trying to pull up all of your data at one time during implementation um, for, for many, many years of students, is we'll direct you to just pull your current seniors and load those, and we'll go through the validation that everything's loading appropriately and being represented appropriately, looking at your senior class as a sample set cohort. But once you do go live, uh, we've certainly worked with uh, a number of customers to then go back and work on um, uh, uploading previous graduating classes and things of that nature uh, so that you can use this more comprehensively um, for a large majority of your transcript exchanges that you need to do um, beyond just your current senior body. Uh, and then also another light question we usually get is, can I send my juniors for those that might be applying early and need their transcripts sent um, beyond, before their senior year comes around? And uh, yes, we've also worked with schools to send junior class transcripts as well and have that information uploaded. So Colin, Cindy asks about, do they have to have the transcript request from the National Student Clearinghouse to process the exchange, or can we initiate the transcript exchange uh, back to the college from their own office? Right, and that's a good question, too. Um, we can support uh, you initiating the exchange without an order coming from a student from the public ordering site. So uh, what Paul touched on in the upper right with send student documents, that's where you would actually go to initiate the very process you're asking for, Cindy. Um, so that's more in the use case. Also in, in uh, Mount Juliet High School's use case, although there's the online ordering site available, Mount Juliet still, um, although they're not printing and mailing transcripts now to fulfill the requests and the needs from their students, uh, I know very much so that them and some other schools have said, you know, 
we still like this process and want to provide this process to the students where they can stop in and write their name down on a form, or we want them to stop in and sit down and talk to their counselor. Um, so we know that those other forms of engagements and touch points are important for uh, particularly counselors and, and with your student body. So um, you can certainly collect sort of those requests, if you will, through other means outside of the system, and then just simply go in and send a transcript as you need to. Okay. As keep the questions coming, we've got just three more slides left and a little bit of live detail here. But I don't want to leave you here. I don't want to leave you with the fact that <clears throat> once you're live, because getting live, becoming live is the most important thing. But once you're there, there are tutorials for your staff users, uh, for students. We have webinars, instructions. We have what testimonials about what users are saying. But to me, the most important thing is how is this going to work? How am I going to uh, how am I going to uh, activate this service? And so right here, which is our last slide, well, except for my name and contact information. If you click this, uh, if you go to studentclearinghouse.info slash tn slash, Lisa, would you mind popping up to let, let's show them what they would see if they did that. So the first click will take you to the Tennessee Electronic Transcript Exchange today. It will allow you to sign up. And when we say sign up, again, we talked about it being free. The sign up is simply providing information to us so we can provide information back to you. So if I decided I wanted to think about this, to do this for my high school, click the sign up now. Uh, and again, when you send this to us, you're not, you're not signing anything away. You're sending that you want information, provide your job title, your SIS. Uh, you'd be surprised at the number of uh, requests we get from students that, hey, I want to be part of the Tennessee Transcript Center. Opportunity then to, again, at a no charge, no fee agreement, uh, to be able to get started. And at that point, we will assign an implementation partner from our office to work with you uh, to make sure that this goes well and you are able to implement the solution. So again, while you're on this page, it's something that I can't do. But Lisa, can you just click high schools there for me? So here, if you click that, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be able to see how it works, who can use it, what do people say. So I don't want this very sterile uh, presentation to make you think that, hey, People aren't here to help you. People aren't here to work with you. Clearinghouse is committed to helping the state of Tennessee assist its students in the college admission process. Again, thinking back to my mom many years ago, I mean, we know how many transcripts go, how many transcripts move from your office across the nation, and we're just trying to provide something that can assist you in doing that. So, um, I think we have the questions answered, and as soon as this turns over, I will provide you my information. But the best way to get to us, the best way, is to click the information uh, panel here that we've provided uh, and go into the, uh, to the form, because the form will get it to us, we'll get it back to you, we'll have some additional information. But my information, as the, the regional director, is ptaylor at studentclearinghouse.org. Uh, we do have tutorials online, but that's not what this discussion is about today. This is an opportunity for you to see, think about, and I would urge you just to consider this from the standpoint of student efficiency, staff efficiency, office efficiency, and you know. So I think Lisa has provided the link right there. If you guys want to take that, send it. So. I've enjoyed talking to you today. Colin, thank you very much. Lisa, thanks so much for your help. We appreciate everybody being uh, being part of the part of the program. And um, I guess thank you and have a great day.